The 2022 Big Ten football season has come and gone, and man, what a season it was. We made a lot of memories, didn't we, this year in 2022. But I'm going to look back and talk about my main takeaways from this 2022 Big Ten football season. It's a great time to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Got Big Ten football content every single day as we look forward to September of 2023. Always mash that like button as well to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses. You know, coming into this season, you had Michigan that finally got over the hump. Were they going to get two in a row? I thought, and I think a lot of people thought, Ohio State would take back the conference. But the biggest takeaway for me is Michigan, establishing themselves as the big boy in the Big Ten. When you look inside the conference and you look inside conference games and inside conference play, the way Michigan just played a complete game and just complete games and the way they were a complete team from start to finish in 2022 was awfully impressive, right? Um, You go off the Big Ten championship winning quarterback in Cade McNamara, you shift to J.J. McCarthy. Look, this was a team, the best offensive line up front. They had the best running game, Um, you know, really good defense. This was a passing game that came on late during the season. They really didn't need to throw the ball until late in the season. Jim Harbaugh has built a really good program at the University of Michigan. Will he stay and continue to build that really good program? That may be decided very, very soon. But when we live in the right here, the right now, Michigan establishing themselves, because I really thought Like the talent that Ohio State had on the field, installing a new defense. I really thought that would take a lot of big steps forward. I really thought Ohio State was a national championship caliber team, and they proved that. They did prove that they were at that level, taking Georgia to the absolute brink. But when I get back to Michigan, no question about it, they established themselves as the top dogs in the Big Ten. Can they be taken down? That's obviously going to be a big question as we discuss uh, certain points throughout the offseason. Next point, I'm going to take a look at Iowa. They are falling behind as a football program. And they, they did that in many ways, both on the field, especially on the offensive side of the ball, and off the field. As well. Now, they just recently dipped into the transfer portal with Kate McNamara and Eric Hall, but beyond that, it's come to a screeching halt. Right before that, the transfer portal, um, ever since that really became a thing, was not something that Kirk Ferentz really dipped into that much, and really, he didn't think it was all that great. But... You look at their performance on the field, and I think that's really what I want to focus on. Right, this was an offense that just needed to be average. That's all they needed to be. But this was an offense that was well below average. Like when you look at the other side of the ball on defense, this was an elite defense the past two seasons at the University of Iowa. And I, I, I not feel like I'm not, I'm not creating any controversy when I say this, but pair it with that offense and I feel like these defenses maybe not last year right but won the Big Ten West made it to the Big Ten championship but definitely this year it seemed like that offense wasted that elite defense this season and then when you look at after the season ended you've got players hitting the transfer portal you've got wide receivers You've got players on defense, which kind of surprised me because of how good that defense is at developing talent. At many ways, then you look at Wisconsin, right? They hire in Luke Fickle, tear it all down just to build it back up and changing the culture. I look at Nebraska and what they did and how well they did on signing day and the momentum that they've been building. There's no doubt in my mind. Right now, Iowa is falling behind, and they've dragged their feet with the decision on Brian Ferentz. If they would have made a decision to let Brian Ferentz go or do something with him, they could have had a leg up in bringing in a new offensive coordinator. But who knows what's going to happen in the future, but either way, dragging their feet, slowing down the process. This is an Iowa program that's falling behind. We'll see if they can catch up in the future. Something else I take a look at. Brett Bielema. He is built for building Big Ten football programs. 
You should never leave the Big Ten Conference, Brett Bielema. Right? This is a developmental program. The Wisconsin program, I thought, was a developmental program as well under Brett Bielema. Like, he's proven, like, Devin Witherspoon will be a first-round NFL draft pick. Like, we, if you were to say that about an Illinois football player, you know, a, two years ago, three years ago, you would have been laughing. You'd have been, no, no, this is an Illinois team that is one of the worst programs in the Big Ten Conference. What he's been able to do in a short period of time uh, has been nothing short of tremendous, right? A tremendous coaching job that Brett Bielema has done. And just his style, his toughness, his physicality, his defensive mindset that he has, he's built for building programs um, within the Big Ten Conference. And I think he's going to continue to build programs um, within the Big Ten Conference. I honestly think, okay, Illinois, you might get to a certain spot, especially with USC and UCLA coming into the program. Illinois might get to a spot where they might hit their ceiling. Eight wins, nine wins might be their ceiling. And then Brett, he could. Like if Jim Harbaugh this season... If Jim Harbaugh leaves to go to the NFL, it would not surprise me to see Brett Bielema as a candidate that could possibly take over at Michigan. Imagine what he could do at Michigan, right? He fits right into that toughness, that physicality type of mold that they have built at the University of Michigan. Last thing I'm going to finish up with, Penn State is a lot closer than a lot of people realize. Okay, this is a Penn State program that has out-recruited the University of Michigan the last two seasons. Like when you look at Katron Allen, you look at Nick Singleton, you look at Abdul Carter, you look at Drew Allar, these are some of the best players that you can build a program around. Like those are freshmen. Those were freshmen this season. And, you know, Allar, of course, is the backup quarterback to Sean Clifford who set all kinds of passing records at Penn State. But other than that, Those other three guys were tremendous contributors on this football team. It's just the more progression they get, the more off seasons they get, especially, you know, coming in as a true freshman, you you don't get a ton um, in terms of reps unless you um, enroll early. But having that whole off season for those guys to develop this program, if they get on the right track and if James Franklin develops these guys into what they can be and what they should be, this is going to be a dangerous Penn State program. Like, Penn State was close with Ohio State. That was a one-possession game in the fourth quarter. Michigan, maybe not so much. But this is a Penn State program that is making waves. The big question is, can James Franklin take that next step? What do you guys think were some of your biggest takeaways from this Big Ten football season? Leave those in the comments below and let me know what you think of my takeaways. Welcome to the offseason. I'm Big Ten Ted, and we will see you in the next one.